cold weather, freezing temperatures, the bane of most RVers, especially those that don't know how to winterize their RV. Now, I gotta file a slight disclaimer here. I live in Oklahoma. Our freezing temperatures don't happen in big old long month strings. You know, we'll get a couple of freezing nights, maybe a week or two of freezing days, but it's definitely not Ohio or Michigan. So I don't have to go through extremes really when I'm winterizing. Um, and when there's just a single night that is going to dip down a little below freezing, sometimes I won't even winterize. I'll just open up the low water drains and drain the water heater and turn on the heater in the coach for the night. Now as we get into this, and let's just talk a little bit about ice. It's frozen water, duh. Ice, water expands by close to 10%. It's the high 9% as it freezes. So, which is why you see busted copper pipes. Um, the PEX plumbing that is in most modern day RVs has a lot of give to it. It will flex a lot. Um, so typically when we're talking about you know the hazards of freezing temperatures for RVs we're not really worried about the plumbing itself. It's more the fixtures and the valves and the connections. Uh, you know water water left in a kitchen faucet and the temperature gets down below freezing for some time that water will freeze it will expand and it'll break the plastic pieces in that faucet which will pretty much just make the faucet useless unless you like running water all the time um, So, you know, that, that's, that's why we winter, winterize when it gets down to freezing. And like I said, here in Oklahoma, I don't go to extremes on the winterizing. You will see guys that they will drain all the water, then they will blow air through the system, and then they'll run the antifreeze through the system. Now, I'm... I'm not poo-pooing the idea. You may need to go that far if you're up north. Down here in Oklahoma, I don't see the need. There's, um, you know, water expands 9%. If you've blown out the lines, there's probably not enough water in there to freeze up and cause problems. Maybe in the faucets, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but if you're going to run antifreeze through the lines anyway, why blow them out? So, there's that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just trying to look a little pompous, you know. Um, Got to apologize. You know, I've spent decades learning things and training people. And one of the things I have found that is most effective in training is... Um, understanding everything that goes on you know uh, well not everything I'm not quite that smart I'm sorry um, just understanding why we do things and under understanding some of the things that go on so I will put a timestamp down here at the bottom of the screen right somewhere right in there um, so you can go past all this stuff I'm spewing about frozen water you may not be at all interested in it but maybe if you watch it you can point out where I'm just dead wrong anyway I'm gonna be interrupting this video quite a few times because 
I didn't have a script or I, I had some notes written down that I did not look at during recording this video and there's a few things I noticed that I missed along the way um, or just wanted to elaborate on so I'll be interrupting from time to time but I'll let you get back to this bonehead rambling about ice so, ice acts like water as far as it seeks the path of least resistance. So, you know, when you see that split copper pipe, what, what has happened is <clears throat> the surface of that water has frozen and it's the, the, it keeps moving out towards the end of the pipe once that ice plug has enough surface tension against the outside of that pipe it can't push any further down the pipe so then it starts to expand and expand until that pipe breaks so you know and but pex plumbing has so much give in it I've seen a couple of experiments online where people have frozen PEX plumbing and the the, the uh, plastic pipe itself never breaks. It's usually the connectors that pop loose. So anyway, my method of winterizing is really simple it takes just a few minutes i know you know dealerships want to charge you a lot of money to do this i mean that's what they're in business for is to make money um i've heard upwards of 130 dollars to winterize and since i've been doing this myself on our rvs for so many years i just i just can't fathom that but i drain the drain the low water drains I clear out the um, water filter. I dump the water filter out and then I run antifreeze through the lines. And that's it. I'm done. I mean, it's really not much of an exaggeration when I say it takes me about five minutes to do it. So, anyway, if we can talk that pretty little girl into helping us out a little bit we can go out there and show you how I winterize. I didn't even have a hat on. <laughs> you know, there are some folks that believe that the uh, antifreeze gets diluted when you run it into um, lines with water still in it. Um, so they will blow out the lines and then run the antifreeze through. I don't know how much credence there is with that. I've I've never blown out the lines, to be honest with you. So, and I haven't had any issues yet. But like I said earlier, I live in Oklahoma. <laughs> don't have a drunk lady filming you. So I've got a pair of low point drains on this side and another pair on the other side of the coach. So there's just not much in there. <laughs> we just make sure they're drained out there. My other low point drains are in here. There's not going to be much water come out of them either. Now, if you have a conventional hot water heater, the tank type hot water heater, um, most likely you're going to have a cold water in to in incoming line and then hot water outgoing line and then a line connecting between the two of them with the valve on it. So what you want to do is open up that valve in between 
those two lines and shut off the valve going into and directly out of the water heater. That'll bypass the water heater. And I'll show you a diagram of it. Um, then you'll want to remove the drain plug from the water heater. And once you get that drain plug removed from the water heater, go ahead and pop open that pressure relief valve. It'll hasten the exit of the water that way. And then put the drain plug back in it good to go and keep the hot water heater bypassed you don't want to um, let the pink stuff into your water heater into the tank type water heater um, that stuff will it'll stay there for forever not to mention you'll need six or ten gallons of pink stuff if you drain the hot water heater and then you run your pink stuff through but you'll notice when you drain your hot water heater there is still some water in the tank uh, a lot a lot of people will take this opportunity to clean out all of the deposits in the in the hot water heater and if you've got time to do it it's a great idea but you'll notice that there's water remaining in the tank because that the drain is not beneath i mean on the bottom side of the tank it's it's at the bottom of the tank but there's still you know a half inch or so of space underneath that drain so you're still going to have water in the tank and you know if you were to put the pink stuff in there well that pink stuff would be down there at the bottom of the tank even after you drained all the pink stuff out of it so just keep the keep the hot water heater the tank type hot water heaters bypassed and don't put pink stuff in it anyway you got all the got all the water airplane or maybe you just turned the wrong valve <laughs> anyway opened up all the low low point drains got that taken care of oh. you may want to come in here a little bit closer Something else you don't want to forget is to drain your fresh water tank. Now, like I said earlier, I emptied out this uh, water filter. One practice is to, um, if you have a one of the in-house um, water filters first of all make sure you remove that filter you don't want it to get all the pink stuff in it but drop an empty water bottle into the filter housing that way it takes up um, a lot of the space in there so you're not filling that entire housing with antifreeze and if you look back in here here's the water pump your water pump may be you know, it could be buried under a cabinet or behind a false wall. Off of my water pump, you see this three-way valve. And you can see by the tab on this valve that it's going, it's, it's going straight back into the water system. So by turning this valve, now I've got it coming out this hose, or drawing water from this hose and not from the tank. Now, most, most of today's RVs are outfitted with that three-way valve. If it's not, it's a fairly simple solution. You can get the valve from Camco has a three-way, they call it a winterization kit. It's a three-way valve. Um, or you can piece something together from Lowe's if you're handy enough. Now this antifreeze, don't use car antifreeze. That stuff's like poisonous. This stuff is safe. You can drink it straight from the bottle. Wouldn't recommend no, it. No, you cannot. <laughs> 
Yeah, Miss Terry got a little worried about that comment. I've got to explain something to you. I have a a, a severe case of smart aleckness. Don't drink the antifreeze. It is safe for RV water systems, for pot potable water systems. Don't drink it. That, you won't like it. Don't drink it. Hopefully that keeps Miss Terry happy. Because she was kind of in a tizzy over this one, over that comment. So don't drink it. Don't, don't, don't drink it. Don't drink the antifreeze. Don't do it. <laughs> but it is safe, so you're it's not you don't need to worry about that. Mine my RV usually tastes a little over a gallon. Um it's like three dollars a gallon. Um, so, pop open the top, and we drop this hose in it. We just stick that hose all the way down to the bottom, and now we are ready to go. Okay. Now we'll turn on that water pump, and you can I, I can hear it going. I let it pressurize up, that way it's filling up the whole system, because I did drain out the water from the system. Once it's, uh, once it's going, we go, usually a good idea, try to save yourself some antifreeze if you start at the farthest point away from where your water pump is. So for for us, our farthest point is the wet bay. So I turn on the hot water and I'll just spray it until I see pink coming out of the nozzle. Like I said, we're the farthest point away from here, so it's gonna take it a second. And there she is. So, turn off the hot water and then I'll turn on the cold water. And I'll do the same for it. I'll just wait till I start seeing paint coming through it. And it should be a little bit quicker. There it goes. There. We're done with that. We we'll go inside. And we're going to do the same thing in here with our kitchen sink. We're going to turn on the hot water first and let it run until we got. And there we go. So I crank it over to the hot or the cold. Let it run until I got a solid stream of paint coming out. And I may already be out of antifreeze in that bottle. I should have checked it on the way in. Yes, I am. Really, I'm not lying to you. It re really just only takes just over a gallon. But during this vid, recording this video, I used two full gallons because I was demonstrating how to do it. Um, that's just I, I just wanted to make sure I had everything covered. So, 
yeah you'll you'll notice in this video I go through two full gallons as a matter of fact at the end of it it's when I'm doing the shower it's coughing and sputtering because it got down to the bottom of that second gallon so typically it's just barely over a gallon is what I use so. So see, the smart guy would have checked that bottle before he came into the RV, but you know, I'm, I've, that first point that we ran the pink stuff through was at the farthest point away from the water pump, so it only makes sense that I drained that bottle. So now, let that air get pushed out of the line. And there we go, solid pink stuff. I'll let this run for just a second to fill up the trap, <clears throat> the uh, the P trap underneath this sink. A lot of guys will come through and they'll pour about a cup of antifreeze through each drain, but that's what I just did without having to bother with that step. I just run this, fill up that P trap. And something else, if you have an ice maker, turn it on. That way you fill up that ice tray with some wonderful pink ice. But you don't. It makes your Cokes taste so good. No, you, you don't use the pink ice. <laughs> some people don't even... Uh, ran the antifreeze through their ice maker uh, I mean most of the mechanics of the ice maker are in the freezer so but there is plumbing out behind the refrigerator um, against that outside wall I don't know what kind of connections are back there because I haven't removed my refrigerator so I just play it safe and you know like I said some people don't do it I do I just I just play it safe <laughs> yeah it's a Hang little on. tight how in do I, here. How do I push it down? See there, there's already pink coming out. And I will put a bit in here and then flush it. And then just leave a little bit there in the bottom to hang over that seal. Then we do the thing again in the bathroom. Run it till we got pink, which is a lot quicker now. If we hadn't, if we, if we hadn't started at the farthest point away from the water pump, it would have taken us a lot longer. But now that we've already pretty much filled the lines with pink stuff, it doesn't take quite as long. You'll have to pardon the coffee maker in the shower. Terry makes me make my coffee in here because she didn't like the smell of it. F her. Well, we do the same thing with the shower. Already got pink stuff coming through it. On the hot side. Then we get the cold side. Make sure we got pink stuff coming through it. Let it flow for a little bit to fill that trap. And there we go. That's it. We're done. The coach is winterized. And what about the washer dryer? Don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you need to look at the instructions for your washer and dryer to see how it needs to be winterized. Um, it's usually you start running a cycle on it. Uh, it's, it's about as simple as everything else. You run a cycle with that pink stuff in it and then you've winterized it. So it's all pretty simple. Um, Now I'm going to charge her $130 for me winterizing her coach. <laughs> Do you take pennies? Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> there you have it. That's how I winterize our coach. Um, really, it doesn't take me that long to do it at all. It's just the uh, cost of the antifreeze, but just another example of this this coming weekend the weekend following when you're seeing this video or actually the weekend that you're watching the, it, the weekend that this video comes out not necessarily when you watch it you may be watching it two years from now but the weekend this video comes out we are headed back out to the lake unfortunately Thursday night it's supposed to get down below freezing just that one night and then we're going out Friday so what I will do I'll drain the hot water heater uh, the low point drains and the hot water heater and then I'll crank on the gas furnace in the rig for that night put it like 55 60 degrees somewhere around there just to just to keep the heat on the on the lines keep them you know, keep the kitchen faucet and stuff like that from freezing so um, when you do take your rig out after you've winterized it's not that difficult to dewinterize um, you want to if you have a tank type water heater you turn the turn the hot hot water valve and the cold water valve back in line and be sure you turn that valve running between the two you close it otherwise you will have difficulty getting hot water has happened to me before and took me forever to figure out what was going on but close that that center line off and open up the other two and then it's and if you put a water bottle in your house filter you might want to pull that out and it's usually a good idea to dump that filter out anyway just just to uh, get rid of the pink stuff in there because that pink stuff will hang around down at the bottom of that um, filter housing um, that's it run your water till you got good clean water coming out and you're good to go so I I hope this helps out like I said, this is how I do it. Um, it's got me got me by for quite a few years doing it this way. So anyway, we will uh, we'll catch you next time.